U.S. President Barack Obama has reportedly signed secret orders allowing the CIA to carry out covert missions inside Libya. Teams of operatives are thought to have been gathering intelligence for military airstrikes and setting up links with rebels. Meanwhile, the Libyan foreign minister has arrived in Britain, saying he's no longer willing to work under the regime of Colonel Gaddafi. RT's Paula Slayer has the latest from the Libyan capital, Tripoli. Well, there have been airstrikes in the east and southeastern suburbs of Tripoli at a military base there. While the front line seems to have been pushed ever so further back, it is now not far from the town of Ajdabia, which is just 70 kilometers west of the rebel stronghold of Benghazi. There have been a number of coalition airstrikes in and around Ajdabia, which, which certainly does suggest that the coalition is afraid that Gaddafi's forces are closing in on this town. And also, they do not want Ajdabia to fall to Gaddafi's forces. Forces. Now, the terrain that the rebel fighters are fighting on is working against them. It is essentially one highway in the desert. It is very hard for them to get supplies. And certainly at this stage, it does seem as if those coalition airstrikes are making very little difference. On the ground, Gaddafi is winning the war. But certainly, he has been dealt a psychological blow. His foreign minister, Musa Kusa, has defected. And he is currently in discussions with the British intelligence. Now, Kusa has been the foreign minister of this country since 2009. He headed the Libyan intelligence agency for some 15 years, and that position earned him the nickname of the man of death. He is Gaddafi's right-hand man. He is trusted by Gaddafi, but he certainly has been described as a shrewd operator by the international community. So many here are asking, what is it exactly that Mr. Musa Kusa knows that has caused him to defect, and just how important can the information he has be to the coalition partners? Well, the big question on everyone's mind here is the whole question of weapons. This is a concern that Tripoli has had from the beginning, and it is a legal question whether or not that United Nations Resolution 1973 actually allows for the arming of the rebel fighters. The rebels themselves have shown themselves to lack good leadership, to be quite loosely organized, and by and large not to actually know how to use the weapons that they do have. They do have surface-to-air missiles. They've used them, but if you remember, it was just a few weeks back that they actually shot down one of their own aircraft. The other big concern is just who is going to train and equip and assist these rebels in terms of being able to use those weapons. Is it going to be the United States or is it going to be European powers? And what the Tripoli government is saying is that if this happens, this will just be one step closer to the deployment of foreign foot soldiers in this country. Now, we understand that about two to three weeks ago, the American President Barack Obama reportedly signed a secret order that saw the deployment of CIA agents to this country. We understand that they have been making contact with the opposition fighters. They've been assessing their needs, determining their strengths. Ironically, though, what Tripoli is saying is that it might be a good thing that the discussion is now on the international table, on the international agenda in terms of arming the rebels, because it is forcing the international community to revisit the question of who is among their ranks. At the same time, it is questioning the whole legitimacy of this operation.